Hello, hello, it's Sonny Melendrez, and welcome to the positive side of the radio spectrum. This is the all-new Sonny Melendrez Show. Every week, we strive to bring you inspiration and entertainment through storytelling, fascinating guests, exclusive celebrity interviews, and most of all, lots of enthusiasm. Now, recently, I received a message from Ikenna Obahi that I wanted to share with you. He listens to the show in Nigeria, and he simply said, I want to be the source of motivation to others. Help me. Ikenna, let me offer you three things I've learned about the timeless art of inspiring others. And by the way, the very fact that you want to do this, Ikenna, means that you are where you need to be. First, carefully prepare each presentation, deciding on a point that you want to make, and then drive it home. And practice, practice, practice. Secondly, Accept every opportunity to present to others. Each time makes you better for the next. And third, Icana, when you stand there with all the eyes that are on you, love your audience. Bless them with your words and know that each time you speak, you're planting seeds that may take root long after you've finished. Speak on, Icana. You're on the right track. Thanks for your message and thanks for listening. And now, on with the show! Sunny Radio, sunnyradio.com My guest on this week's program is a mom and a housewife by day and a comedian by night. Her gift of making people laugh has served to lift the spirits of countless audiences. It is my pleasure to welcome the very funny and mega-enthusiastic Jessica Cepeda Ramirez. Ooh, Ooh. Even with a Ramirez. Yeah, with a Ramirez. Nice, man. Yes. Uh, <laughs> How are you, Jessica? I'm doing so great. Thank you so much for having me. This is a mom's dream. I feel like it's like mom make a wish come true right oh. now. Yay. Speaking of moms, have you uh, seen the uh, the Netflix uh, series about Mrs. Maisel? I love Mrs. It's kind of my yes, life. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's, exactly. That's, you remind it. me of her because it's it's a story about a... Uh, uh, about a, uh, is she a housewife or what is she? She is, you know, in the 1950s, you know, a lot of the women stayed home and they cooked and they, you know, really just really, really took care of their husbands. Right. And, um, she, <laughs> not, not like now. <laughs> no, that's why I wanted to preface that. That's Take back in the 1950s. Yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> but she, uh, supported her husband in comedy a lot. And, you know, he was funny, but, uh, you know, there was just one moment where they had a break and she had a break, so to speak, and yes. just went on stage and let go. Right. Which is every comic dream, right? Right. You, know, you write and you write and you write, but you would want to get out there and let go. And she just does. She just lets go. And the, the bar maiden behind the counter looks at her and says, you know what? You've got talent. You know, you've got talent. And I love that you bring that up because I feel like you were that person in my life. Who came really? To me, who came to really? me at a young age and you said, believe in yourself. You know, you, you've got talent. If you know you've got talent, believe in that talent. And so I relate to that. You know, I relate to that wow. one person coming to you and saying you can do it. And the second she heard that, you can do it. You've got talent. Get out of her way. And, and that's why I, I wanted to bring you to, uh, to these microphones. The fact that you are a great mom, housewife, not housewife, but wife. Hey, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I don't yeah, you are. You know? yeah, yeah, you are. And, um, and then by night, you like to comedian. I you do. like to go to the comedy club wherever. And now these different shows, you do it with Cleto Rodriguez yes. and uh, all these other people. Tell me, when did you know that you wanted to get up on that stage and make people laugh? I sold real estate for a long time. And I made really good money, Sunny. I'm not going to brag, but I did well in sales. And I, I just wasn't happy. You know, I got to drop my kids off with somebody else. I got to get, watch them get raised by somebody else. And so I started praying. Mm. I started praying. I said, God, help me. I, you know, I have this passion, and I love to make my clients laugh in the car. You know, sometimes you had to make them laugh just from killing each other over buying a house, <laughs> you know. And, you know, one day I just said, you know, I'm going to do an open mic. And it was in 2008, and the real estate market started kind of going downhill. But this was actually God's answer to a prayer of mine. Yes. My real estate business slowed. I started doing open mics, and I just really realized – 
what my passion was, and it was to make people laugh. And it was for the one. If I could make one mom laugh, if I could make one mom laugh, and mind you, sometimes, Sunny, it was just one. I understand. <laughs> there no, was just one I laughing understand. in the audience. Believe me. It believe was one, me. one laughing. Yes. It w- started there. One other human being laughing, that's all you need. It is. That, it's all you need. And, you know, you mentioned open mic. Now, if people uh, are thinking about a, a performer like a, a singer, uh, they don't understand what that is. With open mic, you're not out there singing a song or doing a, a, another person's material. You're actually out there. Yeah. And people are hearing this stuff for the first time. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, open mics are where laughs go to die. <laughs> they are, it's I mean, true. It is. It's where you build your skin as a comedian because there are other it comics is. that are there and they're not there to laugh and support you. No. You know, I mean, they'll tell you, this is how they'll tell you it's a good joke. Good it's, joke. Good joke. Afterward, you know, or here's a tag, or they'll give you a tag afterward, and that's how you know you hit a good joke. But you're not there for the laughs, and that's important because it helps you to, you know, really get your rhythm down. You know, was there a joke? Were there enough tags? And I've been blessed to have people in my life like Cleta Rodriguez and Roman Garcia and mm-hmm. Danny Engel, mm-hmm. amazing comedians who have come into my life, who have helped me really formulate my set and give me confidence to keep going back up because it's difficult. You know, it's easy to do comedy off stage. But you do something oh, in the yeah. midst of all the adrenaline. It's like trying to do comedy while jumping out of a plane. You know, I mean, you, you have to do it with all the adrenaline you running do. through you. you do. And, and feel the crowd and where they're going. And, um, and I love it. I love the challenge. I fail a lot. But that's where I oh, learn. But it's electric. It, it really is. is. And you can't wait to get back up on, on, on stage. You, you mentioned about comics just saying, uh, you know, good, good job, good job, whatever. Um, I was uh, explaining to somebody what it's like to be doing your set in front of other comedians. Because you may as well not have anybody there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know? I mean, they may make noise or they'll, they'll heckle you or whatever else, but they're not really a great audience, no. you know. So how long is your set right now? You know, I have so many sets. I keep writing new sets. Whenever I have an opportunity to go up, I write a new set. And then uh, I write a new one and a new one. So total, I probably have about an hour. I just have to sit still wow. long enough to put them down yeah. and to formulate that, which is something that, like, I look at the greats like Cletho and, you know, Roman, and they've done that. They take all of these bits of sets. They figured out what works, what joke works. And this is what I learned from you, Sonny, is that you find what works, you pull that out, and you enhance that. And, and that is really an art form. And I'm just so grateful that God places people in your life that when you want to do something, I right. have no skill set. I was a real estate agent. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have no skill, I have no training. There wasn't a stand-up comedy university. Yeah. But when you want to do something and you step forward, I feel like in that faith, God brings those people forward. I have no business sitting here with my idol, Sonny. Oh, no, my goodness, no, so no, 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 no. But look how good God your, is. Your hands are cold. My, my, I'm telling you, it's, it's the adrenaline we talked about. My hands get freezing and my face gets hot. Yeah. But I push through and I do it anyway. And that's the thing, too, is that whatever stops you, if there's a fear or if your f- face sweats like crazy, keep doing it. There's a joke there. Your, your hands <laughs> get you're freezing and your ha- face gets hot. If I could walk around with my hands on my face like this, yeah, it would be okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies understand. The ladies the, listen. The the hot me or the cold me. <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, the great thing about, about comedy is that it's everywhere. You mentioned that you have a piece here and a piece there, and you need to put them all, all together. Uh, when does it come to you? I try to write for my own life. You know, one of my sets talks about the only time a mom can get a really good rest is if she has surgery. <laughs> I highly recommend it for any of those is ladies that, listening. Is that why you had the two children? <laughs> Just to get a rest. <laughs> it was a gallbladder situation. Yeah. The doctor said, uh, Ms. Ramirez, it's going to be about uh, six to eight weeks recovery time. And I told my family six to nine months. Uh. <laughs> I did. It still hurts. Sunny, yeah. when it rains, it still hurts my gallbladder. Yeah. <sighs> and your kids, what, what do they think? They are the best because they are so unfiltered. Kids will not... Now, see, you know how you and I will give that courtesy. It's called a courtesy laugh. A courtesy laugh. Kids are not giving you a courtesy laugh. No. No. No, 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 no. no, Mom. That wasn't funny. Mom, we need to jump that. Yeah, Yeah, we need to up that joke a little bit. Or maybe try this. Yes. But they are really encouraging to me. I get to do something really cool. I get to volunteer at the school's drama club. And it's, it's the greatest calling. If the eight, well, next to this, get out of here. Sonny <laughs> asking me to come out of here, get out of here. This is the best ever. But I get to encourage kids at a young age to really tap into that talent. I get to explain to them that there's no such thing as stage fright. Kids, it's called adrenaline. And the same thing happens to basketball players and football players right, right before they go out. Right. And so I get to explain to them what to do with that adrenaline. And I say, you know what, kids, the more the talent you have, the more adrenaline you're going to receive in that moment. 
and and to give them that courage and that confidence and because you know the arts sunny no make me cry but it's it's just a, a dying thing you know they don't really pour into the arts as far as the schools and things like that in the system and so I love volunteering and doing the drama club it's Good just a great opportunity and they teach me stuff they one time sunny I went to them and I said hey kids you know Jessica's nervous you know so here I am sweating all over the place and they said you know what yes you just need encouragement. And I said, really? So why don't you give me that? And so some, they started giving me encouragement, Sunny. And so for the mouths of babes, you know, yeah, to this 40-some-odd 40, yeah. 40 <coughs> uh, woman, oh. you know, it's, it's a blessing. It's amazing. Uh, one kind word, one small part of encouragement, or that was, you know, I love that. That was just so good. You know, those are little movies that play back in our heads over and over again. And I, I venture to say that you could go back to grade school or times when uh, your mom, who's with us here today, you know, told you something, and it's just kind of been there. It's this little uh, DVR that you have of your, your life experiences. Oh, my gracious. I feel like that was the perfect setup. Are we Serena Williams and Vanessa Williams? Is that the right word, Serena and Vanessa? Because you're <laughs> yeah, setting me up. Yeah. Sonny, um, yes. I have something for you. What's that? Well, a wonderful man that I met with at Panera Bread, you. <laughs> told me one time, you said, if somebody affected your life and if somebody has done something really good for you, you write them. You said 300 words. No, Sonny. I That's didn't get true. That That's you said, true. And you said, and you show up at their doorstep and you read it to them. Now, you refuse to give me the address of your home after the restraining <laughs> order. <laughs> so I tried to drive around San Antonio yelling Sonny out of my car. But when you called me today, I knew that this was the time I got to read it to you. And wow. so if I can, it's not wow. 300 because I have ADD. That's a whole other story. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, I am. My Little Pink Radio, dedicated to Sonny Melendres. For Christmas in 1986, I got exactly what I wanted. My Little Pink Radio. All I wanted to do was listen to my favorite DJ, Sonny Melendres. <laughs> See, at the time, we didn't have iPhones and computers. So that little AM FM radio was my only media outlet. And boy, was it a good one. Every morning I would pop out of bed. Well, my mom's here. She'll tell you I didn't really pop out of bed. It was so dragging. <laughs> so was, and I would turn my dial to Sunny Melendres and I would start my day. You wouldn't think small daily inspira- inspirational messages would do so much. But Sunny, you changed my life. When I was younger, my father wasn't there as much to give me encouragement. However, our relationship is strong now. God is good. Hearing your messages of hope and dreaming big made me believe I could. I listened every day. And some of the things you said decades ago still ring in my head. Mm. Don't give up was the most precious advice you gave to me. You gave it to everyone in the city, but to me, it was to me. And I won't give up, Sonny. Not giving up is a really hard thing to do. Sometimes the easier thing is just to do that. But where would I be if I had? Thank you, Sonny, for the invaluable advice you continue to give me. How do you thank someone who has touched your life in such a way that I almost feel unworthy to be your friend? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm absolutely going to be your friend. Mm. (laughs) This is happening, okay? (laughs) (laughs) I'm pinching myself. Oh, my goodness. I I credit my start in comedy to the inspiration you gave me as a child to be myself. This is off script, but I was a weird kid, Sonny. Mm. And you always said that that's okay. Whoever you are, whoever you are this morning, you go be it. Whoever you are, you go do it. You believe you can and you can You have a way of lifting people up even when there is no benefit to you. You see in people what God sees in people, and that is beautiful. Today's world is full of so much filth, Sonny. It's hard to be a mother raising her children. I use you as an example of true talent and how to shine for God in a way that is honoring to your family and seriously entertaining. What, what? (laughs) God speeds, Sonny, in all you do. Because the world needs more sunny and little pink radios. My, my goodness. Come here. Oh, oh my goodness. Thank you so, so much. What, what a beautiful, beautiful gift. I can't believe this. This is just, this is one. You know, when we're on the radio, and I say we, broadcasters, anybody who is on the air, we hope that we're touching somebody 
with our words and encouragement and just the, the things that we bring to the to the uh, to the to the program and, and to have someone like you out there listening and and to to feel what, what you just obviously described and then to actually physically be, be here is uh i'm telling you that that's my dream come true because <laughs> dream. it's it's just a it's a wonderful validation of what you try to do and and you know i've always said we've we're all here to help each other and why not do it every way we can? Oh, it's yeah. so rare. I love that. And you're, I love how rare you are. You don't even know how rare you are. That's how beautiful. If you are listening <laughs> to right now and you agree, please share this station. Share this message of Sunny. I'm telling you in this world, there is no positive. Sunny is positive. We need more positive. Why would not be here lifting each other up? Right. We always think, I think what happens is sometimes we think, well, I don't want to lift that person up because it won't lift me up. No. It's quite the opposite. Yes. It's quite the opposite. Right. You know, you lift somebody and you are lifted. Exactly. So if, if anything, hey, do it from a selfish standpoint, right? Exactly. Hey, I'll help you out, but God, what you got for me? No. They <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I, will, I will treasure this. This is t- totally unexpected. And uh, we're out of time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's get back on track. I, I want I want to know about uh, your your comedy life and your comedy career and your vision for yourself mm. in the future. What, what do you what do you see for Jessica? Starting off small, you know, the seed that was planted a long time ago. It's Christian comedy chicks, and it was a God seed that was planted in me. That there's a group of comedians of, that we come together and we laugh about being hot mess moms. We started a podcast about five years ago uh, about being what. Hot mess moms. Hot mess moms. And proud. <laughs> and proud. I'm a hot mess, but God loves me. There you go. You know, I think that's the lie sometimes is that women think, well, I'm not good enough, and so I'm not worthy of the, that kind of love. And you really are. You really got, God sees what a mess you are. He's not blind. And no. he loves you so, so much. And so right. that's really the message of joy when I started the Christian comedy chicks that I wanted to start spreading. That's right. And, you know, as moms and stuff, we don't have access to, you know, the bigs. You know, I'm sitting here in this mic, and I'm like, this delicious mic. It's delicious. <laughs> but we're kind of in humble beginnings and so we have our podcast but we're really happy and like i talked about for the one man when we get that message from africa or somebody from india right a mother in india right. sunny right that says jessica thank you or laura thank you for for sharing how hard it was for you this morning and how oops, sure i kind of lost it on the kids but i'm gonna rein it on back with the Lord and Jesus. And and that kind of message, being able to be real and hear somebody so far that heard it, that's powerful. Isn't and it? that's inspired by you. I'm gonna, I am gonna hope you don't get tired of hearing about it because no. I'm going to keep telling no. you. It's inspired no. by you. No. Because even when I thought, well, I don't have much, you told me how you started with nothing. You didn't have much. You were taping together little things and making things happen. <laughs> and this was just at Panera, but I, I was so inspired to just make what, with what you have. If you don't, you yes. look at stuff and you think, oh, yes. I'm not Mariah Carey. I don't have an AT&T stage. I can't go sing. No, 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 no. no. Use what you have. Exactly. And God will multiply that. Exactly. So we've been enjoying the podcast and, and we do, you know, I do stand up when I can when Roman and Cletho and Danny will have me. Um, and I love to do open mics to practice, to sharpen the sword because you want to get out there and die every now Where and then. Where do you do the open mics? I like to go to Goofy's in uh, Canyon Lake. That's where I live. <laughs> It's kind of country. I mean, this is, I, this is not a place. This is some guy <laughs> named Goofy, and he's up there at Canyon Lake. Legit. <laughs> well, gosh, come on in. Oh, oh, oh. We're like one tooth, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. You've been there? Oh, you've been there. Okay. Goofy's. <laughs> is it a comedy club? It is. Well, they have, uh, you know, a kind of little bar on the front, and then yeah. they have a little comedy club in the back. Sometimes they've got it's like. It's called Goofy. It is. Goofy's. It's great. Yeah, I, you know what? I got to get. I got to get Sunny Melinders up to Sattler, Texas, Mom. Sure. Absolutely. Sunny's got to come to Sattler. Absolutely. All right. So, so you go up to these different – have you been to the uh, – do they still have open mic at the uh, LOL? They do. They have open mics there. And a really sad thing, they closed down the River Center Comedy You're Club. You're kidding. Now, they renamed it to the Improv, but I refuse. I will always call it the River Center because that's where I cut my teeth. That was my first – open mic there but the lol comedy club is still running strong right great shows there all the time even during open mics we have so much talent in san antonio it's ridiculous i mean you go up even to an open mic and a free show and you're gonna get you know right entertained it's great exactly now do you also do uh, some youtube videos and stuff i try to but again you know i'm kind of using my iphone you know tony i'm using what i've got sonny you I'm are using what you I got, are you know you're telling your facebook story just adding to it <laughs> As I walked into the studio today, you, 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 your mom got here early, 
And I, I walked in. I'm, all of a sudden, I'm on, uh, I don't know what I was on. Facebook Live. Yeah. <laughs> Sunny, Sunny says, am I on Facebook Live? I said, uh, there's only two people watching. It's it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it goes on your page, and that's it. There it is. Sunny looked amazing. I made yeah. sure I had you in the high angles and the good light. I had you, Sunny. Thank I you. had Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and you brought your little doggy. Oh, yes. Little Dallas. Yes, Where's yes. Dallas? What's he doing? He's over here. Does Dallas ever talk? Oh, only when I pinch him. <laughs> no, really? I'm just no. no, my mom has yeah. little Dallas. And here, she has replaced me officially with this little dog. Dallas yeah. has, oh, Dallas has paper, Sonny. Now, your mom is here. Introduce us to your mom. Yes, this is Pam. This is my mom. Say hi, mom. I look good on radio. <laughs> <laughs> now you know where she gets it from. <laughs> well, if, you were, if you were to look at your, your 14-year-old self, Knowing what you know now, and even back then, you wanted to do something, you just wanted to make people laugh. What advice would you give to little Jessica? <sighs> be bold. To be bold. Um, I did that when I was actually 12 years old. Was I 12, Mom? Was that when the, we were in the Indian Guides and that happened? You were probably 10 or 11. I was 10 or 11 and 12. And this is the boldness I'm talking about. We were there for Indian Guides, and I was supposed to be doing something with Indian Guides, but you were there across the field. You what? Were, you were shooting something with KTFM. Yeah. It was back in the 80s. Right. Okay. Yes. Now, in that moment, I you know should have stayed with the group. But I chose to be bold, and I dar- knowing I would get in trouble. Oh, Sonny, <laughs> knowing I had no permission. I because I asked mom, "Can I please go see Sonny?" And she said, "No, we have commitments here. Come on." I was bold, Sonny, and I went across that <laughs> field and waited in that line. And it was there was about five or ten people in the line right in front of me, and my mom was marching down that field after me. You should have seen her. And I was like, "Come on, lady, wrap it up with a picture." <laughs> <laughs> to be bold, and I was, and I got to hug you, and it was just inspiration come to life. Your your voice and everything I listened to was right there incarnate. Totally worth the punishment, wow. by the way. It wow. was a week of being grounded. Totally worth the punishment. <laughs> but just to continue that boldness. And to not be afraid to fail, you're going to fail a lot, and that's really where a lot of your lessons are going to come from. Um, you know, I'm still kind of in that phase. I understand. That fail I understand. Learning phase. Now we talked about your kids. What about your husband, Mike? Yes. Yes. What does he think about your comedy? You know, he is an incredible musician, and he has so much talent on the stage. Ah. I can't even play the tambourine, so it's a soul. I think you it. can. Oh, Sunny. <laughs> you try really hard. But he is a real encouragement to me. I mean, he is just there. If, if I want to do a show, he's there to watch the kids. You know, if I tell him I had a bad set, you know, he's there to pick me up off the ground. I'm just really blessed. Husbands and wives always have these different things that, uh, that really bug them. And say, yeah, I can just change this about you. <laughs> what would that be? Uh, okay, listen. Nothing, honey. I love you. Is he listening? Oh, babe, you're the best. <laughs> Cut tape. Okay, truth. Here yes. we go. Yes. My husband snores. Yeah. You don't snore, Sonny. I don't. I know you don't snore. I don't. I know you look at those nas- I, look at those nasal I sleep cavities. With those my nasal mouth cavities. Closed. <laughs> but my husband snores, and so anyone who's listening whose spouse snores, they understand that it's kind of a race to beat them to sleep at night. You know? It's yes. like you're just trying to get to sleep real quick. Because yes. once you hear the first Oh it's over. Oh. You know, the freight train has left the right. station. Okay? And so he gets really into it where he's and he's and he stops breathing. And yeah. so I push him like wake Heard up. That. Yeah. There's and a name like, for it too. I it's, think it's, it's called sleep. Yeah, sleep app. It's called yes. I Saved Your Life. You're welcome. Because, yeah, because he woke up and he's annoyed. Like, you know, like, hey, why are you waking me up? Oh, I'm saving your life. Yes. You're welcome. Exactly. Right? Peace. So, like, this happens three or four times in the middle of the night, Sonny, and you hear the, <gasps> and you think, do I really need to wake him up? Maybe he needs to fight for it. Right? You know? <laughs> do I really want to get in the middle of God's plan here? <laughs> okay, Sonny. I'm sorry. But, you know, at 3 a.m., these are the thoughts. I understand. These are the thoughts with no sleep. Maybe you can encourage him right now. Get yeah. back on that regimen. Yeah. You know what I would use? Duct tape. <laughs> you might want to try that. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, this has been just delightful. I, I hope that you never, ever lose your gift of making people laugh. And uh, I, I've, uh, I have a little prediction. I predict that one day real soon something's going to happen and you're, all a sudden, you're going to be that little girl again running through the field. But this time, your mother will be encouraging you, saying, go, 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 as you walk up that comedy ladder. And I know you're going to go far. Mm, Thank you so much. (laughs) You're making me cry like a comedian who cries. (laughs) (laughs) And and perspires. Yes, all the time. I'm serious. Fountain, the human fountain. Oh, God bless you. 
Well, I just want to say that you can come see this human fountain at the Alzabar Shrine on December 28th. There's a show for Tres Leches, great. which is Roman and Cleto and yes. Danny. They're yes. incredibly funny. Yes. It's a great show. Alzabar Shrine. Yes. Very so, good. And then do you have a website or just a Facebook page? Facebook page. Go to Christian Comedy Chicks and like ah, our Facebook page. Okay. Yes, from there you can find our right. blog. And if you go to iTunes podcast, you can download Christian Comedy Chicks podcast. We would absolutely love to have you as a listener. It'd be great. We'll have all the links. Thank for you so much. Thank Sunny. you. God bless you. God bless you too. Well, that's a wrap. My thanks to Jessica Zepeda Ramirez. Now, don't forget, you can listen to the show on demand at sunnyradio.com slash show. You can also subscribe to the podcast version of the program. Till next week, I'm Sonny Melendrez, encouraging you to face each day with great expectation and enthusiasm. And don't forget to be bold. Bye-bye.